In this video, we're going to cover the first review exercise at the end of Tutorial 1. Assuming that your grid is set properly as per the directions in the text on page 12, you, your screen should look something like this. If you need to move it or resize it, uh, click the alternate key on your keyboard and your middle mouse and you can move the grid around. If you would like it smaller or larger, you take your finger off the alternate key and use your middle mouse button. Because a grid alone doesn't work with fit. Fit is only when you have geometry. And this is our origin. So we're going to start creating the geometry for this part using create, rectangle, our dimensions in the x-axis are 5, enter. In the y-axis, it's 3, enter. You don't need to use decimals and zeros in this. They're already preset. So here we have a free uh, flowing rectangle waiting to be placed. We look at our print in the origin, that round checkerboard says it's the lower left hand corner of the rectangle and your snap should be set in the grid settings and you can snap right to the 00, zero origin. Let me go up and fit and if you'd like a smaller fit you can right click in space here you have a variety of things you can do unzoom 8 is one of them and there's our rectangle in its abbreviated version of the fit. The next thing we need to do is create lines parallel. These are at 0.75 in terms of offset. Enter. We're going to use this dimension a couple times, so I'm going to go ahead and lock it down. Now it prompts me to select a line. I'll select this line. The offset direction is this way. We can do another one, select a line. The prompt says indicate the offset direction, which is there. That looks good, so I'm going to accept it and then check out of that operation. For our holes, we create arc, circle, center point. Our dimension is 0.3125. For our diameter. I'm going to lock that down because I'm going to use it four times. Here I have a freestyle circle. The book is asking me to use the fast point function which refers to the Cartesian coordinate system with the x value comma and the y value from origin. So when I look at the print this hole is one inch in the x and 0.375 in the Y. I hit enter and it places the hole right there. Gives me another free style hole to work with. The next hole, using the fast point icon, my next hole is 1 plus 3, as is expressed in the print, comma and 0.375 in the Y. Enter, and that hole is placed. Now we could go manually place the rest of these holes, or we can use our XForm function to expedite this. I like what I've got here, so I'm going to apply it and check out of the operation. And I'm going to go up to XForm, Translate. It says Select Entities to Translate. Make sure they light up so you select them. These are the entities. Over here is my end selection. Now I've got a form to fill out here. I want to copy these holes. I don't want to just move them. They're going to move in the y-axis. In many cases, if you've already practiced or been here, it'll remember dimensions that you've used. And this 2.25 came off the print as the distance between the holes and they look good so I'm going to apply them and check they check me out 
Clear Colors is up here. It's also in the right click in Space menu right here. And you can middle mouse this size. And again, if you hit the alternate key in middle mouse, you can move this around. But now it'll actually fit because we have geometry in there. But I like the right click unzoom 8 fit for me. So there's our geometry. Now this is where Mastercam really comes in because the rest of this is going to be done through cutting. As far as the side view on your print is concerned, it's all going to be done with the mill and the drill. But the first thing we need to do is pick a machine. For the entire course we're going to use the mill default. Now we've got a machine. Open this properties up. We need to set the tool settings. Basically per the instructions in the book that you did on your tutorial one. We can call this whatever you want, but I'm going to use number two since it's your second job. From tool, in terms of speed and speed, refers to the preset values already existing in the tool library. So that's the safest one to use. These are more for special applications. Assign tool number sequentially. We'll see that go into action when we pick the two tools for the two operations. I use warn of duplicate tool numbers. And these advanced options will start to reveal themselves as we move forward. And they'll be mostly addressed in your linking parameters on your tree view list. We'll go over that. The sequence has to do with the lines of code and the way that they are numbered. Meaning here that the first line of code is 100 and they will progress in increments of 10. To, so the second line will be 120, the third line will be 130, and so on. This allows you some space in between to add things, like if you need to do a program stop so you can take a measurement or do something with the coolant or the spindle. You can fit lines of code in between, for example, 105, 106, 107. So that's a good way to go. That's very common. We don't check out of here yet. We need to set up our stock. We are using a rectangular piece of stock. And it happens to already be to size um, because we're not going to cut anything around the perimeter or face it or anything like that. We're just going to cut the geometric features into this already to size piece of metal. You want to display it so you can see what's going on. And you can use wireframe or solid. I use wireframe. My origin is 0, 0, 0. My Y direction is 3, enter. My X direction is 5, enter. And my Z, in this situation, it's not really a direction. It's really just stock thickness, so we don't use the negative 3 points. I'm sorry, the negative 0.75 here. We just use 0.75. So everything's good there. You can check out of that. And now we're going to start working. Not sure where I got that. Oh. OK. This was in my stock setup. Here's a good lesson. Go back to my stock setup. See this? I forgot to move my origin. It's 0, 0, 0. But it needs to be, all I do is click here. And it moves it to there. And I'm Y3, X5, that should do it. There we go. Now it's where it needs to be. And if you do a, a uh, isometric and a fit, you'll see that the stock and everything match well. So that was a good mistake to learn from. I'm going to go back to top view. I'm going to fit it. I'm going to unzoom 8 by right-clicking to get that drop down. OK. So now we're going to cut the slot. According to our text, page 63, it wants us to use Contour Toolpath. So we go up to Toolpaths, Contour. Just ignore that NC name for now. Make sure our chain is on. Pick this line here. It looks like it's going in the clockwise direction, so we don't need to use the reverse button on it. Pick this line down here. It should make it go clockwise. And those look good. So we actually have a chain. 
with two elements. See here, it's asking for a third, which we're not going to use. Mastercam recognizes these two lines as a chain, even though they're not connected. In terms of toolpath, it can handle it. Our toolpath type is contour. Our tool, we need to go select a library tool because the book says we need a 7 8 flat end mill. And the library's picked one out for us. We don't even have to go through the filter system. If we wanted to, we could go to the filter system and toggle these on and off. Go through the flat end mills, type in 7 8 have it check through all those, and we arrive to the same conclusion. So we pick that end mill and accept it. Now it's in there. It's being used. It's tool number one. And we need verbiage in here so that we can find operations more easily in our program. Because there may be several contour tool paths, and this one will tell us wh which one we were using. We don't hit the green check. We have to go through more of the tree view list first. We're not going to do holders yet. That's more for when we need to get into some tight spots and things, and special long holders and things like that. Cut parameters is very important. We made a clockwise chain, and we want to cut the inside of the slot. Therefore, we need to have cutter comp on the right so we can go up and come back and be inside. Let the computer determine the math on that based on the parameters of the tool in the tool library. We're not going to use depth cuts on this. We're just going to cut it all in one shot. This would, depth cuts would have you take so much off per pass. Lead in, lead out. Everything looks good except we need this rate, radius to be zero because we don't have any lateral space to turn around. It's like a zero radius lawnmower. Zero, enter. So lead in, lead out looks good. There's no breakthrough on this, and there won't be any multi passes, which is similar to depth cuts, only it's across. It's taking so much in the x axis. We're not going to use tabs at all in this class. That's for holding work while you do the interior. Uh, geometric features and then remove the tabs later. Linking parameters is always going to play into any job. The clearance is when the cutter is moving from to and from the part. Retract is what where it's going to go in between cuts. Feed plane is where it's going to come back to before it starts to cut. Top of stock Ours is zero. We have to refer to our stock setup for that. And the depth of our cut is going to be negative 0.375. All these should be absolute except the feed plane. And that all looks good, so I'm going to accept that operation. I can back plot it to make sure it looks okay. Here's my back plot function. I'm going to do a fit, an isometric. We can also increase this screen. This is just like any other video player, and it has a speed adjustment on it. And up, it says your retract. And it's exaggerated for learning purposes, I'll tell you that much. That's way more than a quarter inch. I can middle mouse and pivot this around and make sure the depths look pretty good and eyeball things, which it does. If I want to go back to fit and isometric, I can. And I'm done with this window, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to clear these tool lines by hitting alternate T. And now we can drill our holes. So we go up to toolpaths, drill. We're going to use the drill points, so we leave that one activated. It hit, says select points and hit escape when finished. Make sure you snap to the center point on each of these. Hit escape when finished. I'm finished. 
Those look good. I'm going to check out of that screen. And now we go through another tree view list for the drill function. Or should I say operation? It is drill. The tool is not a 7 8 flat end mill. Let's select a library tool. It offered us one, so we don't need to go through the filter system. So we can just pick it and say OK. Again, we need our verbiage. I'm a stickler on this one because you need to, when you need to sift through your program, know where you're at to make changes, and we will. Believe me. But here we're just going to put the drill the holes. We're not going to check out yet because we have more of the tree view list to do. But notice that it numbered the tool sequentially. And it looks good. It's our 3.3125516 drill. We'll skip over holders. We'll go to cut parameters. The directions on page 63 ask us to use the drill counterbore cycle, which is just blow through it. As opposed to peck drill, which is that particular cycle, or chip break, which is an even different cycle from peck drill. So we're picking drill and counter more. That looks good. Go to the linking parameters. That's something you'll use on every single operation. We'll leave our clearance at absolute 2 like we've been doing. Our retract is absolute 0.1, which is where it will move from hole to hole. Top of stock is 0, and the depth is all the way through, which is negative 0.75, and that looks good. The book asks us to enable tip comp. Here's your tip comp. It's not counting. And then we have a breakthrough amount, just a little bit of extra. We'll put 0.100 for that. And I think that's it for our tree view list for this job. We don't need to use any of these other functions, so we can check out of that. This operation is the only one that's selected right now. See this green check? So we're just going to black back plot this operation. And again, keep these settings fit isometric and go ahead and run it. It's hard to tell if it's right based on the isometric, so I can take my middle mouse and flip it around and look at it. They're all in center. They're all through what looks to be deep enough. Looks good to me. I'm going to close that animation window. And now I'm going to go up and select all the operations. Now they're both selected. And I'm going to use Verify. Fit nice symmetric. Now I have two operations, the mill and the drill. Slow it down a little bit. Hit play. And you can pause along the way if you need to. You see the retract. Looks good to me. I can also middle mouse and flip it around and make sure the holes went through and that the slot looks like it's halfway through. Looks really good. Close the window. And that's basically what you need to turn in. I'm going to go through each one of these operations, so good luck!